Bonjour, today on Travelling Fabulously, we're going inside the Pantheon of Paris. That's right, the Pantheon. You know what I say, whatever you do, do it fabulously. So why don't you come and join me on Travelling Fabulously. Bonjour, today on Travelling Fabulously, we're going inside the Pantheon of Paris. The Pantheon, or as some people call it, the Pantheon, is a building in the Latin Quarter, or the fifth arrondissement of Paris. It was originally built as a church dedicated to Saint Genevieve in 1790. It's an example of neoclassical architecture. Its facade was modelled on the Pantheon in Rome. Speaking of pantheons, there are actually nine pantheons around the world, including the Paris and Rome ones. One of which in Spain is dedicated to illustrious sailors. <laughs> the Pantheon of Paris now is a secular mausoleum containing the remains of distinguished French citizens. King Louis XV, who was known as Louis the Beloved, in 1744 vowed that if he recovered from the illness that he was suffering at the time, that he would replace the ruined church of the Abbey of Saint Genevieve with an edifice worthy of the patron saint of Paris, Saint Genevieve. He did recover, and so they built what would now become the Pantheon. Designer Jacques Germain Soufflot. I really don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but anyways, had the intention of combining the lightness and brightness of a Gothic cathedral with classical principles. But because of its role as being a mausoleum, they required that the great Gothic windows that he designed be blocked and replaced by the many paintings you see are surrounding the building today. In late 2016, a cultural guerrilla movement, mm, I love a good cultural guerrilla movement, completed a year-long project which they covertly repaired the Pantheon's antique clocks. The government tried unsuccessfully to sue the group for this intervention. So the administration that looks after the Pantheon then stopped the clock from working after they fixed it by removing one of its parts. So basically, the efforts of the group were in vain. At the back of the Pantheon, on the ground level, there's even a model replica of the building, so you can truly see the scale of the dome, which is actually the highest dome in Paris. In 1851, physicist Leo Foucault demonstrated the rotation of the Earth by constructing the Foucault pendulum, which was in my video on the Arts de Métiers. The original sphere from the pendulum was temporarily displayed at the Pantheon in the 90s whilst they renovated the Musée d'Art de Métiers, but it later returned. So now there's a copy displayed here at the Pantheon. Behind me is the crypt where many famous French people are buried. So let's go down and have a look. But you have to be quiet because they're actually buried there. So it's sort of like walking through a cemetery, but in a crypt. So not really like a cemetery, more like a crypt. But anyway, let's go have a look. By having the honour of being buried in the Pantheon, you are also being recognised by the nation of France as being one of their national heroes, or great people. This interment is severely restricted and is only allowed by an act of parliament. The author of The Three Musketeers, Alexander Dermas, in 2002 was buried here. Jacques Chirac, or I should say President Jacques Chirac at the time, arranged for this as Alexander Dermas died in 1870. Jacques Chirac stated that an injustice was being corrected with the proper honouring of one of France's greatest authors. President Jacques Chirac in January 2007 also unveiled a plaque in the Pantheon to more than 2,600 people recognised as righteous among the nations for saving the lives of Jews who would otherwise have been deported to concentration camps. The tribute in the Pantheon underlines the fact that around three quarters of the country's Jewish population survived the war, often thanks to ordinary people who provided help at the risk of their own lives. The plaque says in French, under the cloak of hatred and darkness that spread over France during the years of Nazi occupation, thousands of lights refused to be extinguished. Named as the righteous among the nations, or remaining anonymous, women and men of all backgrounds and social classes, save Jews from anti-Semitic persecution and extermination camps. Braving the risks involved, they embodied the honour of France and its values of justice, tolerance and humanity.
Amongst the many national heroes buried in the Pantheon are the writer and philosopher Voltaire, who people claimed his remains reportedly were stolen by religious fanatics in 1814 and thrown into a garbage heap, but those claims were false. The rumours resulted in his coffin being opened in 1897 to confirm that his remains were still there, and they were. French poet and novelist Victor Hugo, who died in May 1885 and wrote, amongst other novels, Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame, is also interned here. Louis Antoine de Bougainville, a contemporary of British explorer James Cook, circumnavigated the globe in a scientific expedition, expedition in 1763. And yes, the Bougainvillea flower was named after him. Simone Veil and her husband Antoine are the last people to be interned here. They were interned in 2018. Simone was a Holocaust survivor from Auschwitz, who later became a lawyer and French politician. If you like this video, share it around with your friends. I love to be shared around. Press the like button just down below there. That's right. And remember, whatever you do, do it fabulously. Subscribe to Fabulousness by hitting the subscribe button just down below. Entry to the Pantheon is nine euro for adults and free for those under the age of 18 but I highly recommend paying an extra three euro for the tour that takes you up to the top of the roof. The balcony here. The second stop will be the terrace with the first view on Paris. And the third one will be the panorama with a 360 degree view on Paris. The tour will last about 40 minutes in total and you will stay 15 minutes at the top. Um, this is a guided tour, so you have to stay with the, your guides at all times. You cannot go back down on your own. As our tour guide said, you walk up approximately 200 stairs to get to the top of the roof. Halfway up is a wonderful view of the inside of the building from the mezzanine level, where you get a closer view of the ceiling as well as a grand view of the floor below and all of the amazing sculptures and paintings. More stairs lead you higher and higher until you get your first glimpse outside and see in the distance the Eiffel Tower. It's breathtaking, but only a snippet of what's to come. I'm here at the top of the Pantheon, which can be accessed on a private tour. You get an amazing view of the whole city, including Notre Dame. YouTube says you should watch this video next. Lenny, hello. Lenny, are you interested? Apparently not. Great, but whatever you do, hit the subscribe button just here so you can subscribe to Fabulousness. That's what Lenny wants you to do. He wants you to subscribe to Fabulousness and watch me next week.